This podcast series is part of the Great Game Athletics, Inc. organization and is brought to you in part by the creative producers at the Soldier Group. The Players Forum is your source for informative basketball talk about mentorship, education, and community. The ball is in your court. This is your Players Forum. The Mamba Mentality. A constant quest to be the best of oneself. I wake up every morning at 4.25 a.m. still to this day to get my day started. I always wanted to utilize my mornings to the fullest, even if that meant for me to get less rest on certain days. Mm -hmm. I took that straight from Kobe Bryant. I had done it so much over the years that I didn't realize where I got this habit from. It didn't come back to my mind until his untimely death this year. It hurt me so bad to know that something that I made my own, it came from somewhere else. I'm Coach Mike. And I'm Agent T, and welcome to episode two of the Players Forum. What's good, you guys? What's going on? What's going on? Yes, it's story time. Um, Every now and again, uh, Coach Mike will be sharing uh, his personal stories in the form of Coach Mike's memoirs. Um, So this is a particularly um, personal story. Heavy man. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. This is this is gonna be really good, um, and I, we're excited to share it with you guys. So yeah, no doubt. Um, if you heard that quote, that was a quote from the late great Kobe Bryant, mm-hmm. and it's just insane to even put those words into a sentence because mm-hmm. it just still doesn't feel real, right? You know, but. I remember the first year of, uh, of pro club experience. Mm-hmm. It was our very first assignment as we were going to break down the mama mentality yeah. of Kobe Bryant. I remember that. And we asked, what did it mean to you outside of one of the greatest basketball players to ever live, how he lived by that every day? Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, it's, it's trippy. Mm-hmm. Uh, October 2009. I spent an entire evening with the great Kobe Bryant. (laughs) I was able to watch his routine. I saw firsthand his focus. I've heard the stories, et cetera, about actually how the man itself and how he would lock in Mm -hmm. to a game, you know, and it's, it's crazy to see it until you're there, you know, and, um, gosh, I was so lucky. Um, so this, 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 this is 2008. Yeah. October 2008. Mm-hmm. I did some research, found a little footage on YouTube that, yes. that, that I had. <laughs> um, and oh, my goodness, I couldn't believe it. That yeah. day was 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 crazy. Yeah. You know, um, I remember I, how excited <laughs> you were when you got back. Like, man, I met Kobe Bryant <laughs> and seen it all. And not yeah. only just him, but everybody in that time. Right. I'm a Chicago kid. So I met Phil Jackson for the first time. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm talking, shaking his hand, standing in front of him, right? Talking to him for all of 30 seconds. It probably felt like right. 10 minutes. And had you started playing pro then? No, I had. I was soon yep, after. Yep, I had. Yeah. yeah, man, that's what was so inspirational about the story because mm-hmm. like, it's like everything fell into place, after like that. right after that yeah. that whole experience. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I remember mm-hmm. that day. So I, I got the phone call mm-hmm. from my guy Julio. Shout out to Julio oh, Lopez, yeah. who was our assistant coach at uh, West LA. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, he he had one of the best basketball jobs I think anybody could <laughs> right. ever ask for. Right, any <laughs> sports man, <laughs> any sports junkie. Right, he was a part of the equipment team for the Los Angeles Lakers mm-hmm. during the championship run too. Right, right. So uh, what what would happen is during preseason. Of course, they didn't play at the Staples Center most years, so um, they would need the help because the the, the regular staff who ran the the the, uh, the Staples Center, mm-hmm. you know, they weren't there yet. The season hadn't started, so Julio had the the power to bring a couple guys along with him, mm-hmm. you know, when we, when they do those little runs. So, man, I got the experience from top to bottom. We rode on a bus to uh, Fresno. It was at Fresno State. Yeah. Um, they were playing the Bobcats. We had like Gerald Wallace at the time, who was just insane at that time. And um, man, I got a chance to to do what Julio does on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. So that's helped set up the players' uniforms, the shoes, everything wow. that they wear in a game, mm-hmm. um, and just just 
basketball preparation, game day preparation. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I got a glimpse of everybody quick, you know, once they got there. But it just didn't, like, sink in. You know, you see people, right. and it's just like, oh, I got to work. I got to right. do my job. So um, that's how the day started. Mm -hmm. um, but that moment, man, oh, my God, like, when it was that time and he got out there, we're going to show this clip, too. We're yeah, going to show this yeah. clip. So <laughs> I found it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we're we going to paint the picture. So once these guys get dressed and they're going out there to do their shooting rounds, everybody's warming up. And um, it, I got out there, and the kid that Julio brought with him, we were both out there, and he was warming up, I believe, Jordan Farmer. And then Jordan Farmer went back into uh, the locker room, and then you just heard this roar, right? Just all these people screaming, eh. So you look up, I, I kind of had the feeling, like, okay, this has <laughs> got to be him. I'm waiting. Right. Right. So it was him. So Cove, he's walking out, and he's walking towards the, the court. And again, people screaming his name. I see that he got the little small earphones in his ears, and he's not paying anybody any attention. <laughs> so he comes out, and it's me. I'm frozen. <laughs> but it's not that moment, like, you know, you hear like other NBA players describe like Michael Jordan where he had the glow, he had all that stuff, you know, going on. It wasn't that. Right. It was just more of my just my curiosity of like, man, what is he gonna do? Is he right. gonna say something to me? What is he want? What is he gonna do? You know what I mean? Right. And he signaled his hands and was just like, like, yo, I want the ball. Boom, I gave him the first pass. Then he's doing his thing. So he's just shooting. He's shooting his mid range shots, his little turnarounds and I'm tripping out, so I'm like, damn, he's doing, he's doing, you know, he's doing the footwork, you know, it looked like Mike, it looked like MJ, <laughs> and it was just, it was, it was surreal, man, and me and him were out there probably for like a good two minutes, three minutes before other players started to come out, so I'm mm -hmm. out there, it's just me and him, boom, I'm kicking it to him, he's, you know, knocking his shots down, just getting himself going, but what stood out to me is that I had expected him to like say hey what's up how you doing and he didn't say none of that <laughs> you know but you had lamar odom walking around you know just being who he is lo is just a friendly guy right so he spoke way earlier mm -hmm. you know when i saw him so i just expected the same from kobe the yeah, same type of energy yeah. yeah but uh of course he didn't give me that so now my mind then went left i'm like damn like is this is this what like you know the media says about him like he's a jerk he's not gonna talk mm -hmm. He's not going to do the, in, damn, man. man, like, you know, so I was kind of disappointed for a second, but I had to get out of that. And like I said, guys were starting to come out, mm -hmm. as you'll see. And um, I'm kicking him the rock, and he does his thing. Now the game is about to start. So I'm on the bench. I'm actually on the floor. So I'm like a towel boy, ball boy, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And um, let me backtrack a little bit, because what I had picked up on, which was kind of hilarious, I ain't pick up on until later, <laughs> the Bobcats – and the coaches was like clowning me because oh, I was really? like, because I'm six, 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 seven. So they like, oh, man, yeah, what your big that. ass doing out here right. passing the ball? He, right. he playing, right. you know? Right, I remember that. I remember <laughs> you telling me that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was like, it was really tripped out on that. And I was just like, all right, yeah, whatever. But it was just, you know, it was an experience. Yeah. I had never been around something like that right. that close. Because I think I was telling you like, man, go talk to him. <laughs> like, go, <laughs> go tell him I'm looking for a team to play. <laughs> <laughs> right so after the fact right mm -hmm. yeah but it was it was just tripped out to just kind of see you know everything everybody's mm -hmm. routine the little stuff you f you figure out uh, right lamar odom wears two jerseys a game you know halftime <laughs> he switches into a jersey a brand new jersey because he doesn't like the wet jersey from the first half i'm sure a lot of players <laughs> probably do that now but back then to me i was just like yo it, he yeah. getting two jerseys <laughs> it was just tripped out but anyway so the game starts Lakers are doing their thing, and um, it's the first quarter, and boom, Kobe, like, tweaks his knee. Mm. Not really bad, but just enough, you know, it's, it's preseason. Right. So yeah. he gets taken out the game, and um, he doesn't return to the game. Mm. So now, imagine, this is the first time I see him this close. Mm -hmm. I kicked him to rock to warm up in the game, and then this dude play like three minutes. Damn. <laughs> so it was like. <laughs> damn, I don't get to see him, Right. you know, and after a while, I believe he knew that he wasn't going back in, I don't know if a right. signal was made or whatever, but right. he, uh, I saw him get up, 
and like walk back towards the tunnel to the locker room mm -hmm. and then um so you know once he get up he moves everybody stops everybody's looking where is he where's he going right. and so he walks away and uh julio kind of gives me a signal like go with him like don't let him go by himself go with him so i get up <laughs> i'm like yeah i'm gonna go yeah. so hell yeah <laughs> I, I, ch I chuck it you know kind of you know pretty cool hey. kept my cool and, and i and i caught up with him and i'm still i'm walking kind of like beside him but behind him right i still don't say nothing to him yeah. he still don't say nothing to me right mm -hmm. so uh we carry on and he goes into the locker room to change out mm -hmm. so he's changing out um he gets in the shower all that stuff and i stand there th outside the locker room of course yeah, but no. I, st I stand there and i wait mm -hmm. for him mm -hmm. for however long that took i don't know i don't remember how long it took but um he came out had on i remember what he had on i, I wouldn't say it was a coogee sweater but i just remember it was a sweater it was fly <laughs> gucci shoes i, I you know yeah, just okay. a little detail yeah. and um so i walked back with him this man still hasn't spoken to me y'all so now i'm kind of like i'm disappointed right but we got to continue our job so he sits on the bench and um we continue with the game and the game goes on gerald wallace had this crazy dunk in the game mm -hmm. which is off the chain i just remember that dunk baseline mm -hmm. but um so the game's over and lakers win and now we are done with the game it's over so we're, we're packing up i'm down a little bit i'm like damn you know he ain't said nothing to me this was still an amazing experience right either way i'm walking around the the locker room i'm, I'm walking around the back and that's when i met phil jackson mm -hmm. so i go in the locker room and i and i see phil and phil speaks he said hey how you doing he's you know the phil has this deep voice and i'm like i'm I'm good, sir. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice to meet you. But remember, I'm six seven, and it, it feels like six ten. It feels tall. Six right. six nine, six ten. Yeah. He was taller than me. Yeah. You know. Then I'm young too, so I ain't got no meat on my bones like that. Then. Right. You know. So, he just seemed like Shaq. Mm, you know. Right. And I shook his hand. I remember, and just you know, pleasure to meet you, man. I'm, you know, that's the first thing he said. Ah, I'm from Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's great. You know. And uh, do you you like the game? You know, I think he said, he asked me, do I, did I like the game? I was like, yeah, I love the game. I love the game. I love to play the game, you know, mm -hmm. and I hope to play, you know, oh. uh, the high level one day. Right. Like, you know, pleasure to meet you. You know, we had right. to go back to doing what we were doing. Right. You know, but still, after all, I still was a little disappointed with, with my interaction. I didn't right. get the interaction I wanted, right? So I was just like, damn, okay. So now we're we're packing, we're packing everything up, and we're uh, putting things back on the bus. And I'm, I think I'm down to like the last bag, like no lies, like a movie. I'm down to like the last bag to put on the bus, and I just hear, "Big man, big man." I turn around, and it was Kobe. <laughs> and Kobe's got you know like like what's up. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I'm walking towards him. He's walking towards me. And, and I, man, he gave me this big pound mm -hmm. and a hug. And, and he was like, man, thank you. You know, thanks for everything Dang, for yeah. the day. And and slid me a $100 bill. Mm, that's what's up. And I just couldn't believe it. And I just told him, I said, man, thank you so much, man. <laughs> uh, You'll be my, my <laughs> Right. But no, no, look. So I tell him, I said, uh, I said, good luck this year. And I hope y'all win it all. And it was just like, I don't know if he responded or whatever, but right. um, I just remember walking away and I was like, damn, that was him. I touched him, you know. Right. It was cold. You had having that moment, huh? Man, but after, you know, we had our interaction and I put everything, you know, went and continued and did my job, I looked back at him. And then, of course, all these people like rushed him and like mm -hmm. little kids and, you know, like the, for real, like women and children, mm -hmm. you know, and you could just see him interacting with everybody and just mm -hmm. giving his time, mm -hmm. you know, like a true professional would. Right. You know, like a real role model. You know, mm -hmm. that was like the first time I seen something like that, mm -hmm. not really being able to register it or understand how important that part, part is. is. Yeah. You right. know, right. even the time he gave me. I'm a part of the staff, quote unquote, right? right? 
But anybody else outside of that that gets that moment with him mm-hmm. is special. Absolutely. And I think that's what made Kobe unique and the person that he was because he always did that. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to explain why. Because, you know, by us living in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. you get to see everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We're spoiled out here in L.A. Every athlete, every, you know, actor, actress, everybody is here for work. Right. And in the summertime, playing in, of course, the biggest league in the country, you know, you, you'll see those stars. Mm-hmm. You know, and for him to always be available for people was something special. Mm, absolutely. And, and that's something that I think I'll I'll never, ever, ever forget that. And I had the pleasure of seeing Kobe maybe two more times after that moment in 2008. Mind you, they won the championship that, that year, I believe, 2009, whatever year it was. I think they beat Orlando or something. Something right. happened. I can't, close, yeah. yeah, I can't tell you because I don't know. I don't, don't get my history all messed up right <laughs> now. Don't kill me. But I just remember they won that year. Um, but, yeah, so just going back to how he just impacted people everywhere he went. Right. But in 2018, my summer league team got to the, the Drew Lee championship. Mm, right. right? right. Remember we got yeah. to the championship yeah. that year mm-hmm. and Kobe came. Yep. And it was like, Kobe came. But this time he came and he watched you play. He watched me play, you know, and um, I had a good game. Yeah. We lost. That's all Unfortunately. Right. Yeah. But I like did well. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's all you could really like ask for. Yeah. You know, in a moment like that. And right. not only did I meet Kobe, man, I met Scottie Pippen that game. I met heroes of right. mine. Childhood right. heroes. Right. That, when we first got together, I remember you talking about Oh my you God. Know, yeah, like Scottie the Scotty Pippen fro back in the day. Right. You know, that was like a big deal in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. You know, 97, 98 was like, that was the deal. Y'all know what I'm talking about <laughs> back home. Right. But yeah, man, I met Scotty Pippen that day and Kobe Bryant. Mm. That is insane. Mm. You know, and you, I, I'll never forget that. I'll never, I'll never ever forget that. Never forget that, man. Mm. My goodness. And now, you know, even within our program, like you was mentioning earlier, you know, when we had our first assignment for the guys was to watch, you know, uh, what was it called? The Muse the documentary. Muse documentary. Yeah. yeah. Showtime. Yeah. Not even knowing, you know, that that is the type of work it, that ethic that we instill in our players, you know. Yeah, you know, mentality. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So that's what the what I had spoke about earlier mm-hmm. about waking up at four twenty five a.m. Mm-hmm. Right. So I had seen this long time ago, where I just remember this clip, and, and you know, for my hoop heads who may remember this clip too, it was just a c- short clip of Kobe running on a track somewhere. I don't know if it was out here in Orange County, but he had on all white. And he was jogging around the track. Then they had a clip of him sitting on the grass somewhere. He was stretching. And it was a, a voiceover of him talking about work ethic and the mentality and how he wanted to get up and beat every beat the sun. Right. Beat the sunlight. And just know that he's working while you sleep. Mm. And I was like, damn, this is me as a young guy. And, and I love the game. I had always had a work ethic. Mm-hmm. But it was just about finding ways to have it routine right you know and to be able to take something like that from him i did that so early Mm -hmm. in my life that Mm -hmm. you didn't i didn't realize until unfortunately when kobe passed away this year like where i got that from right and i broke down yeah i broke down in front of my kids the next day yeah Talk about After that. that. Talk so, about that that whole experience. Oh man, so yeah, so I, I again another moment I'll never forget. Now that you have a timeline mm-hmm. and how it happened and what time it happened and what was going on. So that Sunday morning for my youth coaches that know Sunday is game day for us. Mm-hmm. It's the weekend, Saturday too, but Sunday is mostly those league games. Right. And. Um, my youth program is part of the ARC program, our, the ARC uh, league mm-hmm. in the Valley. And we had a game that morning at 11 a.m. 
So I had to drive to the valley from LA. And I just, it, it was foggy that day. And for me personally, cause now we're, I don't care, we're filming this, but it was foggy this morning. And I love the fog. I love, I just, it just gives you that subtle feeling. It's just so calming. And I just remember being on the one-on-one at eight, nine o'clock in the morning and just feeling a calm about what we about to go do. You know, we, I'm about to go hoop. We got the first game. I'm not about to go hoop. My baby's <laughs> about to go hoop. <laughs> right. But, you know, we had the first game. It was at 11. So, you know, you got to be there, be there early, beat the traffic. But it was just nothing out of the ordinary. It was nothing weird. It was nothing eerie about the day right. or anything. It was just a normal Sunday. And we got to the gym. My babies is doing their thing. We, um, we're, we're winning the game. And then out of nowhere, this is crazy. So out of all days, I leave my charger to my phone. And I didn't charge it the night before. So I was kind of shaky on my battery. So when I got there, I knew the lady at the front desk. And I said, hey, how you doing? You know, ooh, ooh, I'm about to play right now. Can I leave my phone with you and just charge? She's like, yeah, no problem. So I gave her the phone, walked away. I'm coaching the game. So my phone is across the gym. So I don't have anything in my pockets. And I just remember it was towards the end of the game, my little fella and his dad was on the bench and he gave his dad the phone first and I heard him and he said, Kobe died. He said, look dad, Kobe, Kobe, they said Kobe Bryant died. And I heard him but I'm like, I'm, I'm still, I'm locked into the game. We're trying to finish the game. And then he taps me and he says, look, he says, Kobe died. Mm. I'm like, no way, I look at it. I'm like, nah, nah. Then I panic. <laughs> and I walked off. I like walked. I literally Indeed. just walked off from the game. Oh, wow. it was at the end of the right. game. Okay, they were still playing. Right, but you walked away. But I walked away, and when I walked away, I went straight to my phone. So I went and I picked up my phone, and I had like 25, 30 missed calls, text messages. Phone just lit up. Mm. I'm like, shit, this is real. So I just I sat there and all like I couldn't move. It was crazy. I couldn't believe it. But at the time. When I picked my phone up and I looked at that and I'm looking at everybody, it was like, you know how, you know, those old school waves, like you'll have that wave in the crowd mm. where everybody does the wave. They go, oh, they jump up and down or whatever. Mm. That's what it felt like in the mm. room. The room everybody... just got still. Okay. And it was like we all got the news at the same time. And mind you, we're in a little gym. Mm -hmm. We're not in a huge, at you know, where we usually would, would be, mm -hmm. you know, at one of the universities. It was in a small private gym. Mm. So it was just whoever was in that room at the time. And probably right. no more than about 40 people. Mm -hmm. and, and granted, I, I'm in the bed sleep, so I have no clue of what's going on. And when you <sighs> called, I didn't believe you. You know, then I had to go look it up just to make sure. Man. So everybody finds out. They're upset. My baby started to cry. I'm holding it in. I'm not going to do that. I'm still like kind of because I'm in disbelief. I'm like, this is not right. real. Right. This is some hoax. You know, right. I ain't even going to put their name out there. We all know. But it was just like, nah. But then we go into the parking lot. Now, no, before we go to the parking lot, we trying to decide like, damn, are we going to finish the day? Because right. they were tore up. And we had to go play another like two or three games. Mm. Remember, this is the first game in the morning. morning. It's right. early. So I'm like, ah, shit. He's like, are you okay? Are you? I'm like, man, I'm going to be okay for the babies if they want to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll do it if they want to do it. Right. But as I'm going in the parking lot, it was like people were in twos and threes all over the place. It's just like two people over here on their phone, three people over here talking about it, two people over here on their phone. And it was just weird. And then as you see these people and I'm registering and all these people are just kind of discussing it, then everybody starts to get in their cars quick. It's almost like they were about to go to the site or something. Mm -hmm. And then imagine we wasn't far from it. Right. We were probably another 30 minutes, 20, maybe 20 minutes away from where it happened because we were in the valley right. and we were deep in the valley, but right. everyone knows where it happened was in Calabasas. So that's not too far from where we were. Mm -hmm. I think we were in like Winneka or something like that, mm -hmm. but man, and then after that, it was just phone call after phone call. And I'm on the freeway, and it's just phone call after phone call about this this madness, man. About mm -hmm. this just, and then we all know about the other tragic of the victims being there with him. And then it just hurts your soul to know where they were going. Right. Because it's Sunday. It's Sunday. 
it's game day. Yeah. And it just was like, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. you know, those kids were on the plane, mm -hmm. his daughter, right? everything. And I thought it was interesting, um, you were saying how the people that were reaching out to you, you know, when they heard the news, they immediately thought of you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right, right. That, I didn't that really touched me, you know. I had so many missed calls, and it was from a few people, like, yeah, like you saying, like, mm -hmm. you wouldn't even think, right? you know, to just call, like, coach, you are, right, you love, I love you, man, and, mm -hmm. you know, it really had us like that, man, Kobe was, it's a, he's mm -hmm. a hero, you know, and for us here in Los Angeles, again, a guy who was always available, mm -hmm. you know, he was always available, and I believe that even more now that when he had retired those four years, away from the game he was giving out so much information mm -hmm. you know and i spoke about this publicly before about how when kobe left us the information went with him mm -hmm. his daughter unfortunately went with him mm -hmm. and that's where the information was going mm -hmm. it was given to it was being given to her, her being her given to her teammates, teammates yeah. and then to make matters even worse the coaches that was on that plane Right. I can't think of her name right now, but the, the, the basically the head coach, mm -hmm. she was a big part of that. And it was like, that's who he was, you know, you yeah. know, he was giving that information to everyone, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just, it was unfortunate. But one piece that I, I've, I've been so blessed and thankful to uh, keep with me along with that story and that clip was actually, if you see in the background of, of our visual is uh, an autograph championship jersey of oh, kobe right. yeah in um 2010 the actual the last championship jersey mm -hmm. so my dad had bought that jersey um shoot i uh i don't years even know when yeah, yeah it was it was it was around that time, time it was right. that year right. it was that year so let's just say it was 2008 right. but it had that just summer been sitting you know but it's been sitting I, I wore it out in public one time, time. beautiful okay. authentic jersey felt good yeah so my dad had um got me that um yellow jersey home jersey and um the, the the blessing of that was this was cool so after having that experience again this was october i had got a great idea i'm like man i got this jersey in the house i i hit julio up i said hey man um you think kobe could sign this <laughs> you know i was just it was just on a limb it wasn't even really like you know mm -hmm. so um, he says, uh, you know what? Just wait. Just wait. I'll get him to sign it. And I'm like, damn, man, he ain't going to sign that thing, man. He too busy. <laughs> so Julio ends up hitting me a few months later and was like, you still got that jersey? And I said, yeah. He said, okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, um, you know, around Christmas time, you know, Kobe has to do a lot of things for charity. He'll be in that, that autograph mode mm -hmm. when I'll just slide it in and see if he'll sign it for me. <laughs> Good looking. <laughs> right? And, and lo and behold, boom. He hits me and says, yeah, I got you. And he signed it. Mm. Thank you, Julio. Amazing. MVP Julio. <laughs> so um, what I did to not lose it, to not damage it or anything, once I got the jersey back and it was autographed, I sent it home. And I gave it to my dad to hold on to. <laughs> and he put it in the plastic bag, whatever we sent it to, and mm -hmm. put it away for 10 years. Wow. For 10 years. And has it been, I guess so. It's yeah. been that long, yeah. It's been that long. Mm -hmm. Longer than that. It was 2008. Eight, I got it right. back this year. Mm-hmm. And, and so unbelievable. When, yeah, when I did the the studio office makeover. Space, yeah. Yeah, I um, decided it would look dope in a frame along with some of your other jerseys as well so yeah that's yeah. where it is it's yeah i just didn't i didn't even have enough strength honestly to go to the uh memorial that they had at the staples center yeah um i just couldn't do it man and and how ironic is this when all of that was going on uh sun ua shout out to him sun ua oh, right. yeah, the guy who you. was the chinese uh draft pick of 2008-2009 Mm -hmm. I was training him at the time to go back to China. CBA, right. Yeah. <laughs> as this was going on. Yeah. So shout out to my boy, Sean, for uh, actually getting me a ticket 
to the memorial and a button oh, that they gave out that day and i just framed it i put it in the frame yeah and kept it mm -hmm. you know but and we did actually see him you know uh one other time we went to what was that a laker game oh him my god we did yeah so wow i'm glad yeah. you brought that up wow I, man okay i look for that that might be on my facebook but yes wow that was mm -hmm. December 29th, I think, 2019. Yeah. His last public appearance where he had on the orange. Orange, yeah. He had on it the orange and all that. And, it, and him and Gigi was there. Yeah. And we zoomed in. We had really good seats. Yeah. And we zoomed in and said, wow, look, there you go. That's Kobe. There go Kobe right there. Yeah. And not knowing that was the last time we was going to see Kobe. Yeah. Those are the last images that they really have with Kobe. Kobe, right. You know crazy Ooh. unbelievable so th you shared this story with us to you know um share with our guys uh in the program and just aspiring athletes yeah. what, what would you want to um pass on to them from this story what they've all been hearing these last seven months the mamba mentality mm -hmm. and what that means and what that stands for and it's the conquest to be the best of oneself. Mm -hmm. That means every moment, every piece of the day, every hour, utilize it, be the best that you can possibly be. Mm -hmm. Put in the work for your goals. Mm -hmm. Kobe's quest was to be the best of all times. He had, you know, a kill list. He, he wanted to be better than Michael Jordan and in certain aspects of the game, he was. Mm -hmm. Score more points than Mike in one game, mm -hmm. pass Mike in all time scoring list. So, Kobe is special, man. And Kobe is going to forever be here with us. He's going to forever be Los Angeles. He is going to forever be a legend. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if you wasn't a fan of Kobe when he was a player or whatever. But for me, I felt like he inspired the world of what he had accomplished off the court. Mm -hmm. Because we all can be great with the lights and the things, you know, the action. Right. The team, the game, yeah, and everything but behind it. All the things that he did outside of the game is what really, really, really touched me the most because, again, when he shut it down in 2016, I shut it down in 2016. Mm. Unknowingly. Oh, interesting. Wasn't I didn't planning yeah. that. Right. I didn't even put the two and two together. <laughs> yeah, but it was just about for me personally, was what I wanted to transition to. Right. And I wanted to give back and I wanted to coach right. and I wanted to give information. Yeah, I pass on the information and for sure. Kobe did that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to forever be grateful that I was able to at least say in my lifetime that I met him, mm -hmm. I shook his hand, and I played in front of him once. Mm -hmm. So, Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Well, I want to thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Players Forum. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at great underscore gain underscore athletics. Uh, subscribe to us on anchor.fm and also subscribe to our YouTube. Um, we appreciate your support. Peace and love. Peace. Peace, peace.